Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Pentiment. Last time we left off, we needed to find someone to have a uh, dinner with. Uh, so it says right here, I should find someone to share supper with. Most of the families in town are welcoming. Lady Salomea may also want to speak with me after she arrives at the Abbey's guest house. Maybe I could even visit Smokey in the forest. Uh-huh. So we have a few different options on who we could eat with. Um... You also mentioned the thing. I want to check my hypothesis. Will it allow me to... Okay, yeah, we can't we can't go back in there yet. I think the note that we found has something to do with the chapter house. I mean, it, it mentions chapter. And I'm thinking it specifically has something to do with that mural that's on the wall. But... Maybe... May, maybe I've got the wrong idea here, but... I guess we gotta find out who we want to eat with, so... It's on our choices. Most of the families in town are welcoming. Lady Solomea may want to speak with me after she arrives at the Abbey's guest house, and maybe I could even visit Smokey in the forest. Hmm. Lady Solomea seems prudent, but I don't know. I'm kind of interested in ta in in Smokey because I would probably be eating with Voxlov as well. Yes. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then there's the, um, spinning bee. Yeah. I should let Johan know I want to attend, and that would be Johan Bauer. Alright, so let's- let's get- let's get back to town, I think. Um... And just see what we want to do there, so... Um, it seems like I could choose to eat with Solomea, but, um... I'm gonna hold off on that. Oh yeah, while, while I was starting the video, um, some thunder struck, like lightning struck here. Oh my god, it scared, the, it scared the shit out of me while I was getting the video ready. I was so spooked. I was like, oh, what was that? God, it was spooky. I jumped. It's pretty rough. Alrighty, so... Franz Bauer. <coughs> and the one we need to talk to... Johan, which should be Johan Bauer, right? Uh, Florian, there's Big Yorg. I think it was Johan Bauer. Johan. Yes, Johannes Johan Bauer. Brother of Franz Bauer. Okay, so we could eat Midwife, the Bakery, the Zimmerman House. And then we have the Farms as options too. So, I do need to talk to Johan Bauer. This is Franz Bauer. Well, I'm not eating with you. You're kind of a dick. So, I'm not really interested in, uh, doing anything with you. Here's Johan's place. Okay, yeah, so let's- let's go in here and see if we can talk to Johan? Where you at, Johan? Is that you? There you are. Andreas, you got supper plans? Why don't you join us at our table? Uh, maybe another time, Johan. Sure thing, be safe. Okay, so no, we- we can't, like, talk to people to- for various quest things now. We are just straight up choosing who we want to eat with. There's the- there's the lightning that made me jump. It's quite loud. Um... Yeah, you know, I- I think I want to go see Smokey. Uh, let's go see Smokey. Uh, I'm just- I'm just interested in hanging out with Smokey. Plus... You know, maybe- maybe you see some things that other people aren't privy to out there, or, or hear some things, or... Something, I don't know. Let's go see Smokey. It probably would be prudent to go see Solomea, but I'm interested, so... Let's eat with you two. Uh, hey, Mr. Mailer. You need something, Mr. Mailer? Do you mind if I joined you for a meal? I... are you sure? Why wouldn't I be? Most decent folk don't like to associate with my kind. They like the charcoal, but they hate the burner. They're idiots. Let's eat. Well then, I suppose you're welcome. Is all right with you, Voxlov? I suppose. All right, good, good. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Yeah, see, eating with you two's cool. 
Thank you for the hospitality. Of course. Glad to have you. I also Vox Live get his town gossip. Stop, I don't... Alright, alright, I was only kidding. Enjoy the songs of little birds now and then. I'll sing if you will, Vox Live. I don't sing, gossip or otherwise. Smokey is... It's a stupid joke, don't worry about it. Don't soak about it then. What do I want? We got jerky, mountain cheese, and almonds. Uh, I'm, I'm, I do like me some jerky. In truth, I'm the gossip, Master Mailer. Can't corral the proper people, but I like to know what's going on. Yeah, it's interesting uh, seeing the various differences in uh, the meals that we eat with different characters. You know, we don't uh, we don't have bread here. We just have cheese, jerky, and almonds. Different, uh, different, um, dinners for different people. Nuts and cheese is a good combo, though. Tell me some of your gossip, I'll tell you some of mine. Want to get anyone in trouble, Smokey. I haven't heard anything to share lately, or I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I haven't heard anything to share lately. But you and Voxlav, you must hear all, s all kinds of things. You're not wrong about that. Smokey, gossip makes trouble, and people get- and gets people hurt. When you become such an old woman, Voxlav, you're no fun at all. No one's getting hurt, we're just telling stories. Alright then, what have you heard? Voxlav knows something about the prior, don't you, Voxlav? Are you dragging me into this? Look, either you tell the story, or I'll tell my version of it. Stupid. Fine. A few weeks back, I saw that man, the Hungarian, in the woods. He was doing some kind of ritual with blood. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's not a good sign. The use of blood is often associated with black magic. Black magic? I don't care what color it is. Sounds bad to me. <laughs> I don't care what color the magic is. Whose blood was it? His. He cut his hand in the middle of the ritual and dripped the blood in the cup, I think. He kept repeating some phrase over and over. Sex Luke's Tin Every or something. Scared you, didn't it, Voxlav? Well, I don't mind if people have strange beliefs. Let people do what they want. Damn straight! I just don't like blood. What's inside the body should stay inside, as long as your beliefs aren't hurting anyone. Could be witchcraft. Well, I can't speak to what he's doing. Some invocations require a blood sacrifice to the spirit, so the spirit has something material to work through. Work through? Yes, to do the bidding of the practitioner. That sounds bad. You heard anything else lately? Nothing else comes to mind. Well, the good brothers and sisters at the Abbey may have the town folks fooled, but not old Smokey. They get up to all sorts of things in these woods. Delicious. Please tell. Smokey. Oh, please. No one around here cares if I live or die. They sure don't care about what I say to people. Huh. Till they do. Fine. Say what you want. Yeah, I mean, you and Voxlov, unfortunately, having to live out here in the woods, you're both kind of outcasts. Maybe that's why Smokey's cooler with you, even though you're different than everyone else, and everyone else doesn't like you because you're Imani. So... Okay. You know, that monk and nun who do the shopping in town? Brother Washlov and Sister Matilda. It is nice, it is nice to see that someone at least gets along with Voxlov and Sebat as well. It's nice, nice to see that there's some characters in town that aren't complete jackasses. <laughs> well, they do more than shop together. Meet in the woods sometimes where no one can see. No one except old Smokey. Ah, a li little bit of a voyeur, are you? And do the things adults do, you understand? Smokey. What? Oh, it's true! Smokey the voyeur? Who would have guessed? Yeah, but it would be furious if you knew. I assume Mother Cecilia would be as well. But for them, if they're happy, what's the harm? Say Smokey the voyeur. Who would have guessed? It's not like that, just it's impossible to avoid noticing it. Out here in the woods. Sound carries, you know. Yeah, but it would be furious if he knew. 
I assume Mother Cecilia would be as well. Good for them if they're happy. What's the harm? I think good for them. They certainly seemed happy. Very happy if you get my meaning. Hmm. <laughs> Heard anything else lately? No, nothing. No matter. There's plenty more to tell. Well, the whole town's built on Roman ruins, right? Pieces of old town sit underneath the abbey, too. Hundreds of years ago, the Roman built all sorts of things up here. Then one day, they just vanished. They built on their old bones. You should have to be careful where you step in this forest. You're liable to fall into an old ruin. Or get seared, scared halfway to the grave by a ghost. It's true. Smokey saw a ghost. You're kidding me. Not as Smokey. It was late in the evening. The moon was high, painting the leaves all soft and silver. I heard a rustling in the meadow like wind through the grass, like whispers. I looked up. This is my favorite part. This is good. And there he was, standing in the meadow like he's carved out of moonlight, bent near in half. He looks at me, and it's like I've been speared right through my soul. Just those two eyes like dark pools boring right into me. And his edges, the border of them, they shimmer. So hard it hurts to look straight at him. I can't help it. I, I blink. Like, God himself closed my eyes. This chill wind blows through me. Very breath of winter. And when I look back, he's gone. Ooh, creepy. Mountain cheese with some herb on it. I love that story. Hmm, maybe you really did see a ghost. So a weird guy looked at you. Is that the whole story? Nah. Anyway, these ruins are haunted. Hey, Smokey. I have to get back to sharpening knives for the Albars. Or Albans. Alright, alright. Enough talking. Well, that was good. I got some information out of that. Good to see you, Master Mailer. Drop by again sometime. Thank you for having me, Smokey. Till next time. Cool. Now it's sleepy time. Okay. I should get some sleep. The Flood Bedtime. Look at the owl. So did that get added to my notes there? Journal. Let's see. It's getting late. I should head back to the Gertner's game to sleep. I have a lot of work ahead of me if I'm going to figure out who killed the Baron. Yeah, so... Did we specifically... Um... Get names about... I, like, I can't I can't quite remember the names that we actually got for the two. Uh, I, wish, I wish there was a way I could re review that. Um, the names that we got for the two that are in the forest doing doing the do. Because that could potentially be useful at some point. But I don't know. You know, if we ever need to blackmail someone, you always gotta always gotta have your information. All that jazz. Alright, so what do I wanna do? Can I see anyone? I imagine it just wants me to go home now, yeah. Probably can't just, like, walk into anyone's house and talk to them at this late hour. Yeah, probably not. Okay, I imagine everyone's home, so we should probably just get home. Alrighty, so... down... We go... Can I get over there? Can I get down from here? I can, the Gertner farm, there we go. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. Uh, Gertner house, so here we are. I mean, I guess we just go to sleep. I don't think there's anything else I can do right now. I don't think it's going to let me do anything, so. Let's get in. Oh, my God, the stupid lightning. Spooking me. Hey, old Peter. Hey, everyone. Just all piled into the bed. Alrighty. Well, here we are. Still nothing to, uh... Yeah... Still nothing to examine here. It's getting late. I should get some rest. Go to sleep. Alrighty. We're running out of time. Not many, uh, not, not many days remain here. Uh, based off of the, uh, little... T whatever, whatever we're working towards. Yeah, see, one day, 14 hours remain. Oh, I didn't sleep very long. Andre... Good more. Stare at this child. I'm gonna stare. I might not want to wake anyone else up. Okay, we do have a leak in ours, too. Stare at this child. It's the middle of the night, Ursula. What are you doing up here? 
This job... I see. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you a story? Would that help you sleep? Hmm. There was once a little girl about your age who was sold with a basket of oranges. Or let me tell you the story of a little girl who wanted a sleepy artist. <laughs> Let's do this one. This will be remembered. So once a little girl about your age who was sold with a basket of oranges. This will be remembered. Uh-oh. I just chose it because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I thought that was a little weird to, to tell you. But I was like, oh, it leans into my background, so I did it. Sold with a basket of oranges. This will be remembered. A man had to pay rent to the king every year. The cost was four baskets of oranges. This was in Italy, of course. You don't even know what an orange is. Anyway, the man's young daughter had hair the same color as yours, same as an orange. And the man didn't have enough oranges to pay the rent, so he put his daughter in the fourth basket. He covered her with oranges and sent the baskets to the king. Maybe, maybe this will help me with Ursula later, because Ursula will be happy that I actually told her a story instead of just being like, Hey, leave the sleepy artist alone. When the king's servants found the little girl, the king told them to raise her as a servant. They called her Arnsetta, like a little orange. You don't know Italian, so that doesn't mean anything to you, but it's very cute. Anyway, as the prince grew- as the girl grew older, the king's son, the prince, fell in love with her. But the other servants were jealous, and they gave her three impos- Goofful. Anyway, they were happy together. Oh. You- you- you didn't like the story. Alright, bye. Sorry, my story. It was- it was a little too in-depth for you, maybe. Alright. Prime! Time to get back to work. Alright, let's go down and see what everybody's up to. Hey, Ursula! Andrew. Blip. Hello. Eva and Clara. I hope we see you, the spinning bee, Andreas. It'll be fun to have you spinning with us, Andreas. Yeah, we do have to go tell, uh, Johan about that. Uh, let's talk to everybody. Hey, Andreas. Andreas. Mm-hmm. Hello, Peter? God bless you. Okay. So, yeah, I have a few different investigations I could do. Um... Gotta keep track of my time here, though, so I can investigate somewhere. Where's the other place I want to investigate? So, let's see here. The spinning bee. Peasant women, da 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 Yeah, the women meet at John Byron's house, just off the commons. I should let you all know I want to attend. Was able to find the library. Yeah, beneath the crypt beneath the alley. A false relief opened the door that revealed a stairway into the floor of the library. Now I just have to go inside after the nuns have left. Mother Cecilia reacted poorly to the Baron's appearance because she has something to do with the murder. She find out what their history is. She's usually in the Prioress house. Okay, so I can use this to sneak after the nuns have left. Now I just have to go inside after the nuns have left. How do I actually get in there? Because it wouldn't let me go into the abbey. Hmm. Cold hands. Figure out the meaning of the cipher. Pry Frank has been acting strangely since Baron arrived. I should talk to him to find out if there's something going on between them. He's usually in the scriptorium in the Ad's house or the Pryor's house. Discovered the Volvel, yeah. Gerhard. Altelia. Yeah. Should talk with Lucky to find out what they were arguing about. And then Miklas. Okay. Yeah, we have a few different things to do. Um, I think I might want to go to the spinning. That might be a good idea. Hans, how are you? Hey, Andreas. How's it going, Hans? Keeping busy in the fields? I guess. Do you like it? What? Farming. I never really thought about it. Dad says that it has to get done whether I like it or not. What do you think about it, then? Uncle Franz said Brigida might come help with the laundry today. I see. She's Martin's wife, right? She seems nice. She is. Nicer than Veronica, anyway. I wish Brigida lived here instead of her. 
Well, you have a good time thinking about your cousin's wife. What? Until later, Hans. <laughs> uh, bye. <laughs> hey, Johan, Hetty, Veronica. I better see that skinny bottom of yours at the bee, Andreas. Okay. I'll see you at the spinning bee, Andreas. Okay. Yes, just wondering when you turn up. The gaggle said you'd come watch him spin. Between you and me. And he's not about to let, uh, let you go when she's got you in her claws. I hope you got a few hours to hunker down and get comfortable. I have the time just now. Maybe another day, or I can spare the time. I mean, they probably have a lot of information for me. Hmm. Hmm. Probably do have a lot of information for me. Sure, I'm happy to spare a few hours. Eddie, you'll be glad to hear it. She's got a fondness for you, heaven knows why. Now, I can't let you inside among the unmarried girls, being unmarried yourself. But you're welcome to watch uh, through one of the windows. Very sensible. You wouldn't want to be stealing all their hearts, after all. You joke, but I expect you to behave yourself. That idiot never did see trouble. He didn't want to jump in feet first. You don't think he's gone to Innsbruck? Keep listening. Oh. Lord, no. Innsbruck's got to, uh, to be small time to the little shit now. Think he has something more exciting in mind? Hey, Ursula. Ooh, kitty. It's a big world. Perhaps he intends to explore it or escape. That nobleman was just murdered up at the abbey. Martin picked an awfully convenient time to run off. Yeah, so we are talking about Martin. That's who I thought we were talking about. Oh, Lord. Andreas was friends with the nobleman. Do you think Martin could have, you know... What motivation could Martin have possibly had? I'm not ruling anyone out just yet. I don't think this is appropriate for me to discuss. What motivation could Martin have possibly had? It's not our place to say. Martin has a nasty little habit. It's gotten better. Once a thief, always a thief, I say. I saw Martin running away from the abbey the morning Lawrence was killed. God, no. Martin might be a thief, but I don't think he's a murderer. He's a coward at heart. You think it'd take a brave man to you think it takes a brave man to commit a murder? Not a brave man, but a bold one, and Martin is not that. He's your problem, Cad. What do you think? Could he have killed that man? Mom! It's a matter best left to the proper authorities, not a spinning bee. Imagine being tried by a gaggle of peasant women. That's unkind, Johan. It's the truth, isn't it? Doesn't matter if it hurts your feelings. She's right, Johan. You're being unfair. Remind me, Andreas, whose home are we in? I'll lay off him, Johan. Jesus. Andreas, if you're just going to stand around, how about I put you to work? If you're gonna gossip with the girls, you might as well spin with them, too. I'll do it. I don't give a shit. I'll spin. How does this work? Grab the wool from the distaff and twist it tight, then spin the tight yarn onto the spindle. Once there's enough yarn on the spindle, collect it at the bottom and begin again. Draft, twist, spin, collect, repeat. You'll figure it out. Click. 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 Spin, spin, spin. Oh, okay. Click, click, click. Spin, spin, spin. Click. Okay, and then... Oh, okay. Okay, cool. I've got it. Oh, I got an achievement. Look at me, go. You know, I took Ursula to play with Gret's daughter the other day. And there was a strange man in the bakery. Was he polite to you? Can't believe Ulrich wouldn't, uh, would stand for anything less. Wow, Johan, you, you're gossiping? Maybe I should hand you one of these, huh? Asshole. Look at the puppy. And there's the weird owl. 
There's another owl. I love owls. Yeah. He was very reserved. Dark skin. Quite tall. And wearing a tunic? You like the rye bread, I remember. Who is this man? Why am I just now hearing about this? I believe he's staying at the Abbey. Talking about Sebot. That, that must be Brother Sebot. Brigitte and I saw him walking up there after visiting the shops. He seemed lost. Yeah, Sebot. Where is he from? Does he speak German? Oh, Christ, I hate being the last to know. Alright, we gotta spin some more. One, two, three. Spinny, spin, spin. One, two, three. Spinny, spin, spin. Tuck. There we go. You know, I saw Big Yord talking to that nun again. The young one. Eh, who can blame him? God damn it, Johan! <laughs> he knows she's trouble. I told him to stay away. Very pretty, pretty, isn't she? In a mean way? Pretty, perhaps, but a nun all the same. He knows better. When has that ever stopped Big Yorg from doing anything? We have plenty of pretty girls here in town. My Veronica's not half bad. Mom! Like if Andreas any ideas, eh? Was Yorg, was Yorg the one that was mentioned, uh, having a... Having a, having a little, uh, little fun in the woods with the nun? Since you, you all are mentioning that as well. Please, you don't gotta give me any ideas. I already got the idea in my head. We have the hedonist trait, alright? Boom, boom, boom. Twist, twist, twist. Boom, boom, boom. Twist, twist, twist. Tuck. There we are. Look at this. We're pros. Gata's been spending a lot of time at her mother's house recently. Agnes is glad to have her home, and Lucky's always treated her like a daughter. I can tell they're concerned. Are Brigitte and Martin having trouble, Veronica? That's one word for it. Brigitte does what she can, but nothing pleases Martin. He won't lift a finger for her or Wolf. Oh, the baby! Yeah, Brigitte does what she can, but nothing pleases Martin. Yeah. He's such an asshole. Oh, that's not his business, is it? Women's work and all that. Have you ever seen him doing much men's work, Dad? Can't say I've ever seen him do much work at all. Perhaps Lucky can talk some sense into Martin. He's always been such a devoted husband and father. Lucky Steinauer is the model of what a man should be. Hmm. Okay, so maybe Lucky's not the one that... Because Lucky was one of our suspects of... If Lucky is apparently great, then, uh... Oh, hell. Damn it. Damn thing! I was doing so well. Now twist. I screwed it up. Hey! Is everyone behaving themselves in here? Oh, it's you. Afternoon, Otto. Come to see anyone special. Hello, Otto. It's good to see you. Heard laughing from the road, knew you all had to be up to no good in here. Look, there's Andreas. You've been minding your manners. Old Johan here is a real stickler for propriety. <laughs> Hand to God, Master Zimmerman, not once in my life. I fear I've been yoked to the wheel of propriety. <laughs> Hand to God, I'm not once in my life. Hmm. Likely story. Don't be so quick to judge, Johan. Andreas carries himself like a man who's caused his share of mischief. What can I say? I like to have a good time. Too much time carousing, not enough work, and you got the arms of a maiden. We all know you work hard in the fields, Johan. No need to boast. He works hard in other places, too. <laughs> oh my god. No, please! Mom! You've been in town a few months, Andreas. Got any burning questions you've been meaning to ask? About Kyrsal Abbey. Chloe mentioned that the abbot has suddenly started raising taxes. Raising them and changing their terms, yes. When Father Matthias was the abbot, he would let us pay a portion of our taxes and crops. Naturally, the ship for Brains Abbot put an end to that last this year. Even if our crops fail or produce less than we'd like, we still owe the abbey for the use of the land. 
doesn't make any sense. How can he raise our taxes when the price for our grain does not rise too? Where does he think the money comes from? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't understand. He doesn't think about the common folk at all. It's not as happy, it's not his problem. What about the miller? Does he have some part to play in that? Lenart drives a hard bargain. He won't give us a better deal just because the abbot raises our taxes. Yep, there you are. We need his access to more land. Trying to bargain with Linhart won't get us that. Linhart is not a kind man, and he does not negotiate. He might if you carry a lot of debt, but his bargains are cruel. We pay him even before the abbot, though. I'm not sure why. Good. I have nothing Christian to say about Le uh, Linhart Miller, so I'll say nothing at all. Except that I hope he falls into a fast-moving river during a flood and dashes his brains on the rocks. Jesus! Jesus Christ, Eddie. Can we talk about something else? Come on, Andrea. Surely you got better questions than that. About Tassing. You see the monk uh, much of the monks or nuns in town, the anchoress, and the church. Do you know much about her? Yeah, let's ask that. Oh, Sister Amalie. Yeah, you. The one who has visions. You know her, Veronica? We're not dear friends or anything, but sometimes she has these fits, you know. And if Father Thomas isn't there and I have time, I'll wait with her until he arrives. Then when? I didn't know anything about this. Ah, and here I thought you just adored the church building. You're so funny, Veronica. Don't make it sound weird. She's nice, and someone should be there when she's in pain, that's all. Father Thomas told me, she, told me she receives visions from God. She has been blessed by the Lord. I wonder if she may have arthritis. The joints swell and it becomes painful to move. Father Thomas suggested her body was in a great deal of physical pain in addition to her spiritual pain. Her grandmother was similarly afflicted. It was terrible for her. Rest her soul. God rest her soul. I prefer my blessings to come in the form of golden. She's been in Tassing for near on a decade, hasn't she? Since I was a girl, certainly. I've grown up with her in a way. Woman in the maze, it's like something from a tale of knights and monsters. She's trapped in a box. I don't think there's anything romantic about that. Aren't you a little know-it-all? I didn't realize you were an expert. I don't know about you girls, but I'm sick of this wool. I'm sure we've all got other chores to get to. Glad to have that over with. Now I don't have to think about wool for a whole year. Oh, I was having such a nice time. I certainly learned a lot. Care for an escort home, Eva? I'd like that, yes. <laughs> I expect everyone will be on their best behavior going home. They always are. Johan, please. Andreas, will I see you home for supper? Something to take care of before, but I'll try to make it. This was very illuminating. Thank you all for letting me join you. Thanks for coming by, Andreas. Come back anytime. Unless you come on Abbey business. Don't threaten him with a good time, Johan. Alrighty. Well, there we go. We finished our... We finished our gossip hour. Cool. Spinning bee. Should find someone to eat with. A bird in every eve. So, what kind of updates did we get from that? Journal. Uh, the spinning bee. I attended the spinning bee at John, John Bauer's house. It gained some clarity on the various tensions in town, including that Martin Bauer is a known thief. Though the women agreed he likely doesn't have the temperament for murder. Um, they did not have high opinions of the mill person. And they obviously do not like the abbot. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we got some info there. Len Lenhart M Mueller. Town Miller, home husband of Else and father of Paul. Else? Else? Not Elsa. One of Tassing's wealthiest citizens. He is widely disliked for his heavy tolls and his cruel nature. Yeah, you sound like a giant dickhead. Um, and I don't like you very much. Already. Wolf. Yep. Infant son of Martin and Brigida Bauer. Yeah, Martin sounds like quite the shit as well. Johannes Hans Bauer, son of Johann and Hedy Bauer, brother of Veronica. Hans is a quiet boy and is reasonably well-liked. He is not known for being particularly bright. Mean. 
but okay. Brigida, daughter of Agnes Steinauer, uh, daughter of Lucky Steinauer, wife of Martin Bauer, mother of Wolf. She lives with her husband on their farm, close friends with Veronica Bauer. Okay, cool. So we got some updates there. Alrighty, well, I think, uh, that's where we're gonna end it today for, um, oh god, uh, Pentiment. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for some more.